Hi, YouTube Hi. family. Hi, sis. Good Hi. morning. We are on section seven in the second half of the workbook lessons. And um, this one is entitled, What is the Holy Spirit? And our sister is, uh, Nook is going to read it for us. I am, aren't I? <laughs> yes, you are. I am. What is the Holy Spirit? <sighs> the Holy Spirit mediates between illusions and the truth. Since he must bridge the gap, between reality and dreams, perception leads to knowledge through the grace that God has given him to be his gift to everyone who turns to him for truth. Across the bridge that he provides are dreams all carried to the truth to be dispelled before the light of knowledge. There are sights and sounds forever laid aside. And where they were perceived before, forgiveness has made possible perceptions tranquil end. I like the tranquil ending. Yes. <laughs> where do I sign for that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the goal the Holy Spirit's teaching sets is just this end of dreams. <clears throat> I might read that again. Mm -hmm. The goal the Holy Spirit's teaching sets is just this end of dreams. The sights and sounds must be translated from the witnesses of fear to those of love. And when this is entirely accomplished, Learning has achieved the only goal it has in truth. For learning, as the Holy Spirit guides it to the outcome he perceives for it, becomes the means to go beyond itself, to be replaced by the eternal truth. I would also add the word changeless there. Yep. Right? Yep. If you but knew if you only knew how much your father yearns to have you recognize your sinlessness. I'm going to read that part again. If you only knew how much your father yearns to have you recognize your sinlessness you would not let his voice appeal in vain, nor turn away from his replacement for the fearful images and dreams you made. The Holy Spirit understands the means you made by which you would attain what is forever unattainable. Now, I just want to stop here for a second because... Um, I, I want to flesh this out mm -hmm. and I'm asking Holy Spirit and you, sis, uh, for uh, the correct interpretation here because it seems very confusing. The Holy Spirit understands the means you made and I'm thinking he is talking about the dream right, of sin, guilt, and fear, of yes. the body, um, of time, and, of course, of the ego's <laughs> central dream, which is death. Mm -hmm. So that's the means we made. Is that correct? Yes, the gap. Okay. By which we would, you would attain what is forever unattainable, and he's talking about the separation from God and our brothers, right? Right. It's unattainable, okay, because it's a dream. It's not part of God. Right. And, if you, and if you offer them these hallucinations to him, Holy Spirit, he will employ the means you made the dream for exile to restore your mind to where it truly is at home. In other words... What Jesus is saying here 
is that when we offer him our misperceptions hmm. of the dream we made, the body, the dream, death, or time, etc., then he will divinely reinterpret and repurpose everything. That's right. And notice that it's the Holy Spirit that does it, that the mythical sense of self cannot. We have to do, make the invitation to, to Holy Spirit to look upon what we made as an alternative to God, to experience ourselves as separate. We can bring it to Holy Spirit and say, look upon this with me and take it from me. Okay, so now Holy Spirit can take what we made and bring it to the truth in our mind, right? And we're going to continue to find out what happens when, when we do that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, from, from knowledge where he has been placed by God, the Holy Spirit calls to you to let forgiveness rest upon your dreams and be restored to sanity and peace of mind. Without forgiveness, will your dreams remain to terrify you? And who the hell wants that, right? <laughs> um, he doesn't say that. That's me, sorry. <laughs> and the memory of all your father's love will not return to signify the end of dreams has come. Accept your father's gift. It is a call from love to love, that it be but itself, only itself. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is his gift by which the quietness of heaven is restored to God's beloved son. Would you refuse to take the function of completing God when all he wills is that you be complete? Hmm. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to ponder that one. Um, so what's really hitting me is that the only way home, the only way to awaken is by accepting the Father's gift, which is the Holy Spirit. So even though we wanted to um, experience ourselves as separate and we allowed the idea of sin to enter into the mind and we got lost in all the layers and the complexities of the egoic thought system. Uh, the Holy Spirit has always been present for us in our mind. That was the gift. That was God's surety that we couldn't be lost forever. And so Holy Spirit's in our mind and simply waits for us to get exhausted with this idea that we could attain something of value apart from God or that we could ever be complete without God um, and to turn. And the invitation on Mythical Me's part is the forgiveness. That's our function, to look upon what we think we've done and to forgive it, to recognize it's never been and to also affirm that it has nothing that we want. We turn like child, tired children back to the arms of the Father. And upon that slightest invitation to Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is there to illuminate what we think we've done, made, compared with the truth. Perception to knowledge, right? Fear comes and, and it's brought to the truth of, of love and light, right? And so when we take the two and try to, and Holy Spirit brings them together, what isn't dissolves or has to give itself up in the presence and the power of what is real, right? So darkness brought to the light, the darkness has to go. Uh, perfect love casts out fear. So this is what we've been trying to avoid. We didn't want to hear Holy Spirit. We didn't want the two to be brought together because we know what we're doing isn't true, has no lasting staying power, is, is purely illusion, right? So you bring an illusion to the truth and the illusion has to go when the truth is recognized. So right. that, yes. that's the, big, the biggest step in all of that is being willing to recognize untruth. Yes. Okay. And this is, a, if I could, just share a quote here. Yeah. And um, it's from the text, Chapter 14, Section 7, right? And um, 
he's talking about the split mind here and we'll just get into it. Disassociation is a distorted process of thinking whereby two systems of belief which cannot coexist are both maintained. Now he's talking about love and fear. In other words, the Christ mind, which really is all our mind, mm -hmm. and the split that we introduced, which was our belief in sin, guilt, and fear, mm -hmm. right? Fear. Yes. So um, now he's saying here, if they are brought together in awareness, mm -hmm. the, two, the two of them, their joint acceptance becomes impossible. But, and this is the sleeping world, all the split minds out there. But if one is kept in darkness from the other, fear is kept in darkness from love. Their separation seems to keep them both alive and equal in their reality. Just to give you an example of that quickly, mm -hmm. is this is how, don't swear, Nook. Okay. This is how profound the split is in our mind is that we believe that guilt, blame, is just as real as innocence, mm -hmm. as guiltlessness. We do. We believe they're both just as real as each other. Mm -hmm. We also believe that um, hate is just as real as love that abandonment and betrayal is just as real as love. I mean, it goes <clears throat> on. We believe, <laughs> yes. we believe that, that um, death That's is right. just as real as, as life. In right. fact, we believe that the inevitable ending of life, life is God, mm -hmm. is death. Yes. So it's like, I mean, the world really believes in this shit. <laughs> you said you weren't going to swear. No. Oh, that's not true. Yeah, we're I'll all very something way worse. <laughs> I mean, it's just for good on you, sis. Split, right? It's... Yes. It's it's good. We're all very happy to say that yes, life is real and God is good and love and yes, yes, yes. And yet every day we're looking upon illusions and we're depressed and angry and hatred and full of judgment because this is also true. So God is true, but yet God's opposite is also true. And that's our at mythical me is every day. We're like a pendulum, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can, we want both. So there could be a sense of a mythical me. And yet, you know, the, the, uh, the thread that runs throughout the course, and it's a quote in the course, is the truth is true. And nothing else is true. Mm -hmm. There's there's a split. We're, we're saying here in the world, the truth is true. Yeah. But what I see through the body's five senses mm -hmm. is also true. Right. So, yeah. So, so we don't want to look at the logic. We don't want to bring them side by side. And so can you give a, like a practical example for somebody about, you know, like the idea in their mind that um, that we really love God and that God is good. And if we were to ask you guys what your thoughts about God are, one of the exercises that we do in the Take Me to Truth family is create a whiteboard and we ask the group, what are your ideas about love? And inevitably it's, you know, God is good. God is love. God is omnipotent. God is omnipresent. God is, you know, fair and the only judge and whatever. There's a whole, but they're positive. And then on the other side, we ask, okay, now look at your life and all the compartments in it. So you're going to have your family, your children, then you're going to have your job, maybe your finances, your home, your body, your money. Um, so, well, that's finances, but yes. Okay. So you got that. Now give completely over to this good, loving, powerful God, your finances. <laughs> give God your relationship. And it's like, oh, hell no. Well, why not? 
Okay, so what are the fears? If you were to sit there and say, okay, God, from now on, I'm working for you. You're gonna handle everything that I need and all my finances, um, I, hands off the wheel, you know, what does that bring up for you? Terror, anxiety, doubt, extreme fear, what? Tears, <laughs> okay? So I remember when I first started that, it was I'm gonna be a bag lady living under a bridge. That's what I really believed. Um, that's where my trust in God was at the time. And so you can see, there's the split. Okay, part of my mind, God is all good and loves me and he's got every, all my needs are known and already met. And if I give over my finances to him, I'm screwed. So that's one example. Maybe you could apply that to your own situation. Where are you afraid to allow God to take control mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. any aspect of your life? Beautiful, yeah. sis. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to have practical examples like that, right? Yes. And um, yeah. There was so something else I saw real quick. I just want to jump in uh, because this is important about holy relationship. Left to our own devices, we can continue this facade of dissociation. Like I'm learning, I'm a course student. I'm learning how good God is and everything, right? But during my day, after I put the book down and my workbook group is over, I go right back into my dream, believing that what I'm seeing is real, right? So I get to keep my dissociation safe because I've compartmentalized my life. But when I join in holy relationship, this is why ego does not want holy relationship and why people are very resistant to it. Because what happens to those beliefs that you've got split that are totally an opposite, right? 180 degrees opposite. That's insanity, but it feels okay. We can maintain this until we've got a brother that comes along and says, can we look at this, you know, because they're not under our delusions. So they're coming with the truth and some clarity and they're going to bring to us the truth. So here's my stuff that I want to hold on to and I'm believing, but when the truth is brought and laid down next to it, kaplunk, oh man, I've got to give this up in the face of looking at the truth with my brother. Much rather live alone, much rather not be bothered by my brother, don't want to see that inconvenient truth, right? This is another reason why holy relationship is a fast track. So just oh, want to bring that in. Powerful. That is powerful. Hmm. Yep. You hit the yeah. bullseye, sis, on that one. Yeah. Because there can be no dissociation uh, in a holy relationship. It just yeah. can't be because we're both, we both share the same goal. You know, divine common goal yes and that is to heal the split mind that's right so you're around sniffing around like looking for you know where are we saying one thing and doing another right where are we inconsistent yeah okay good point thank you i might just finish this quote <clears throat> sure oh i'm sorry um, yes. no that's okay no i i <laughs> this is all helpful i'm sure yeah. it is yeah um, so he's talking about the dissociation we just and that we keep both parts of our minds separate. Mm -hmm. He says here their joining thus becomes the source of fear, for if they meet, acceptance must be withdrawn from one of them. You cannot have them both, for each denies the other. Apart, while well, we keep them apart. This fact is lost from sight, for each in a separate place can be endowed with firm belief. But bring them together, and the fact of their complete incompatibility is instantly apparent. One will go, because the other is seen in the same place. Okay, so the function of Holy Spirit in our mind is to reconcile that split. Mm -hmm. That's the function of Holy Spirit. And of course, in my own um, experience, and I know in yours too, sis, we've experienced this together as well, is in, especially in an advanced holy relationship, um, the Holy Spirit is very vividly perceived within our brother or sister. Mm -hmm. So, you know, while we 
we kind of believe we, well, it's true, we can hear Holy Spirit or we can feel Holy Spirit alone. Yes. Mm -hmm. It gets ramped up when we're in holy relationship because yes. we cannot deny that we're, we're going to actually not just hear Holy Spirit or feel Holy Spirit within, we're going to hear and see and feel Holy Spirit coming through our brother. That's it. It's undeniable. He says the Holy Spirit makes his home in the holy relationship. And so one of the two or more in holy relationship is going to be the voice for Holy Spirit. <laughs> you're, you're in relationship with Holy Spirit. <laughs> that's it. And that's evident, right? No, wi no wiggle room. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So that is that. Great um, introduction to what is Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, sis, did you want to do the lesson? Because we have a lesson here. Sure. 281. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Lesson 281. I can be hurt by nothing but my thoughts. <clears throat> and in deference to our sister, I can be hurt by nothing. Oh, oh let's see. I can only be hurt. <laughs> I can only be hurt by my thoughts. Only my thoughts can hurt me. That's it. That's it. <laughs> All right. Father, your son is perfect. When he thinks that he is hurt in any way, it is because he has forgotten who he is and that he is as you created him. Your thoughts can only bring me happiness. If ever I am sad or hurt or ill, I have forgotten what you think and put my little meaningless ideas in place of where your thoughts belong and where they are. I can be hurt by nothing but my thoughts. The thoughts I think with you can only bless the thoughts I think with you alone are true. I will not hurt myself today, for I am far beyond all pain. My Father placed me safe in heaven, watching over me, and I would not attack the son he loves, for what he loves is mine to love as well. I can be hurt by nothing but my thoughts. I can be hurt by nothing but the thoughts I think and believe apart from God. Mm -hmm. So if there's, this is just pure logic. Mm -hmm. if, if I feel attacked by any thought, That is a thought that I'm accepting apart from God. In place of, yes. In place of God. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it's just, it's every single thought that we think apart from God are all the same and they're all a defense to not share the thoughts that we think with God. And every single one of those thoughts are going to bring us pain because it produces guilt in the mind it's a sin it's a sense of no to no to god and yes to to illusions that's why we need holy spirit that's right <laughs> and and we do need to be willing to be wrong about our thought willing to be wrong about our belief and that gives holy spirit then permission to take it from us 
Right. It's the surrender of a doer. It's a surrender of also the I know mind. And it's in our meekness of saying only true thoughts are those thoughts that I share with God. I'll be still and let those be revealed to me. Because anything that originates in mythical me is more illusion. Only God's thoughts can bring us happiness. If we're ever experiencing anything other than happiness, it's because we have forgotten and we started employing our own so-called mind, right? But the Holy Spirit's in our mind and those are our thoughts that we share with God and that just requires a turning away from what we were thinking as an independent authorizer and making that invitation again. The invitation to forgiveness and allowing our, our true thoughts to arise in our awareness. That's all we can do. And then <clears throat> peace is restored. That's right. And along with peace is the felt state of love. That's right. And gratitude. Yes. And, of course, it's in that state of peace that we really can hear guidance or feel guidance. You can't feel guidance when you're in a state of fear. No, that's the that's fear's function. That's why we came up with fear, because it seems to sever communication so that we can't hear the voice for Holy Spirit. So we do need it's just forgive and ask Holy Spirit, what is the truth here? How are you seeing this? What is this for? All right, that's lesson 281. Thanks, sis. Thank you for unpacking that beautifully on the Holy Spirit. Yeah, beautiful. It's great to do it together. Yeah. Uh, thank you, family, for being with us and helping us heal. Yeah. We love you. We love you. Yes, we do. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.